For most baseball players, pregame rituals and in-game superstitions are something that players follow. But for Worcester Bravehearts pitcher Sean Babineau, he has a deeper meaning when it comes to his pregame ritual. Babineau, at the age of 14 years old, lost his mother to leukemia. Before every single start, Babineau kneels behind the mound, etches his mother's initials in, points at the sky, and says a few motivational words. Before this afternoon's game, I had the chance to speak to Babineau, and he said he is so grateful for this opportunity, and he knows his mother is always by his side. Adam Keenan was an avid sportsman who enjoyed football, baseball, and lacrosse, but baseball was his ultimate passion. Adam grew up playing baseball in Lowell, Massachusetts before playing college ball at Franklin Pierce University and transferring to UMass Lowell. In the summer of 2011, Adam unexpectedly passed away from cardiac arrest during his first practice with the Seacoast Mavericks, a team that used to be in the Futures Collegiate Baseball League. In Adam's honor, the FCBL has created an award that is given to some player within the FCBL that shows attitude, character, and sportsmanship. Coronavirus has certainly changed things for the Futures Collegiate Baseball League here this summer playing baseball, but for some teams, they have been allowed fans. The New Britain Bees and the Nashua Silver Knights of New Hampshire have been allowed 25% capacity of their stadiums. For the Bees here, that's about 1,500 people, and for the Nashua Silver Knights, that has been about 700. A COVID-19 readiness guide has been made for all teams here following safety and health protocols for players, fans, and staff. The game tonight between the Westfield Starfires and the New Britain Bees will be the first live streamed event with fans. We are so excited to have baseball back here in the summer of 2020. The Boston Red Sox defeated the New York Yankees here at Fenway Park last night with a final score of 19 to 3. This put Boston back 10 games in the standings. Tanaka is the first New York Yankee to let up that many earned runs since 1923. Paxson is on the mound for the Yankees tonight. Can he hold it down, or are the Sox going to take game two here at Fenway? Alex Cora stated earlier today in a pregame press conference that this team has taken a little bit of a different route from last year, but the hope is still to win the World Series in the end. The Boston Red Sox look to avoid a three-game sweep here at Fenway Park tonight as they take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Thanks, guys. Earlier this afternoon, the Quinnipiac men's soccer team took on Iona in the MAC semifinals here in Hamden. The number three Gales defeated the number two Bobcats with a final score of 2-1. Iona will be taking on St. Peter's this Sunday for the MAC finals. The Quinnipiac women's basketball team played the Yale Bulldogs right down the road in New Haven yesterday. Yale defeated Quinnipiac with a final score of 63-59. to Michaela Morris led the Bobcats with 17 points, but that was not enough for their first win. Quinnipiac will take on Bucknell this Saturday at the People's United Center in Hamden at 2 p.m. Speaking of women's basketball, the number one team, the Oregon Ducks, beat Team USA with a final score of 93-86 to this past Saturday. This was only the second time a college basketball team has knocked off Team USA, and this happened before in 1999 with the University of Kentucky. Sabrina Ionescu, Satu Sabali, and Ruthie Hebbard, the trio from Oregon, combined for 73 points. Monday Night Football was quite an exciting one as the Seattle Seahawks took down the undefeated San Francisco 49ers in overtime. The final score was 27-24, to and heading into Week 11 of the NFL, the 49ers are in the number one spot, followed by the Ravens, Patriots, Seahawks, and Packers. Those top five teams have only lost one or two games and have only six or seven left in the regular season. From football to football, the Seattle Sounders defeated Toronto FC 3-1 to to win the Major League Soccer Cup this past Sunday. This was the third time in four years that Seattle and Toronto faced off in an MLS Cup, but this one was the first time the Sounders have won at home. Three second-half goals helped Seattle become the sixth team in the MLS to win multiple league titles. Victor Rodriguez was named the most valuable player after scoring the second goal in the game. Broken hockey sticks are usually a sign of frustration or a hard slap shot, but for Florida Gulf Coast University, they're a sign of saving the environment. The movement has caught on as the local ECHL team, the Florida Everblades, and the NHL have contributed through the NHL Green Program. A lot of buzz around this application change up within the Futures Collegiate Baseball League. Can you just tell us a little bit more about exactly what this application is? It's a late addition to the Navigators roster, but what is it like to have the opportunity to play right now with everything going on? 
You had eight strikeouts tonight in those five and two thirds innings. What were some of your best pitches that were working for you? What's going to be the biggest thing you guys are going to have to do to get a couple more wins under your belt here? As I mentioned, a huge comeback win for you. Six runs in the bottom of the eighth inning for you guys. How can you take this momentum with tonight's comeback win into the next couple games?